One of the coolest events this year on several levels uh, from a production workflow standpoint was the World Cup, um, and Fox just did some really interesting thing. Um, we got Mike from Aspera here to tell us a little bit about that uh, Aspera Telestream Fox Sports workflow. So, uh, Mike, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> all right. First of all, I, I want to <coughs> uh, give thanks to Fox Sports for allow allowing us to allow allow us to talk about this. So, uh, let, let's go ahead and, and talk about a few things. We've only got a few minutes here to talk and. I apologize for those who were at uh, VSF yesterday. You're going to hear a lot of similar material, but uh, I'll try and uh, point out a few uh, different things. So, um, you know, if we look at some of the, the live production uh, uh, information that, that uh, uh, you know, occurred over World Cup, the 64 matches, 31 production days, you know, over quite a distance, you know, 12 stadiums across 11 cities, uh, you know, the production feeds originated in Moscow. Um, uh, you know, HBS provided all the match feeds, you know, via SDI to, to the IBC facilities in Moscow. Um, and, you know, a lot of content produced, uh, you know, largest uh, production event in Sp Fox Sports history, and uh, every match was live on uh, Fox or FS1. Um, if we take a look at, you know, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the at-home production that was done here, and that, that'll be, a, you know, a, the bulk of my focus. Uh, but, you know, there, 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 were, there were a couple of... Uh, uh, UHD feeds that that actually went out and were transferred. And by the way, you know, we'll we'll look at the data uh, here. I've got some empirical data, you know, from you know from the event itself. And uh, I, I think you know it, it, the amount of data that we actually ended up transferring uh, actually uh, surprised all of us uh, when when it, it uh, when push came to shove here. Um, Let's see. I'm going to skip over some things just to, because of time. There were a couple of workflows that, again, that I want to want to want to point out you know, fairly heavily. One is that you know edit at home workflow, and and, and we had a had a one gig pipe going from Moscow uh, back to Pico to the uh, facility in in Los Angeles, and and over that one gig pipe, most of the time we had had uh, three uh, three primary feeds you know running going there, uh, 220 megabit streams. Uh, if you add audio to that, and you're pushing 250 megabits a second, uh, you know, times three, you're at 750, or many times that we actually had four. Sometimes we had up to six feeds, and so you might ask, and I mentioned this yesterday, what might happen, you know, if, you, if you're pushing, you know, six feet, pushing uh, what the, the connection can actually handle. And the answer is, it, 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 um, things fall behind, right? Of course, things fall behind if everything's equal. But with the software and the integration that we've that we've done, we actually have the ability to actually, you know, either pause certain cer certain feeds if we ch if we choose to, or um, or or actually, uh, you know, throttle back, you know, some so some go faster than others and that kind of thing. And that's that's one of the things that's really really important. And I think one of the coolest things that we did was we had this tight integration between uh, Telestream Lightspeed Live. Uh, uh, capture box as well as uh, you know using the spare fast stream technology here so you know the the other thing is is, is that um, you know if, if you are running more and usually the, the time that you know up to six were actually running concurrently they were it, it was because there was match overlap and that kind of thing so but one of the night the cool things is is if you started dropping off so let's say it drops off to three and you have an extra you know you know uh, you know a couple hundred uh, megabits of bandwidth, then the others start catching up just you know really fast because this was a stream to file workflow. And the nice thing is what we were doing was was at the same time we were writing to local storage, which is harmonic media media grid storage locally. Same time we we're writing locally, we we're writing remotely to these files in Los Angeles for on-site editing and and their their uh, you know edit bays there. Um, then there's a whole scheduling piece. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about you know, uh, about that, but you know there is. Uh, I'll show the the uh, technology providers that that were involved in the workflows that, that I'm going to talk about here in a second. But uh, you know, Reach Engine was the content management system that was that was used, and um, you know, of course, you know, scheduling between the the capture the capture boxes and and some you got to get that metadata into Reach Engine, and, and in this case, and and so there was a, a bit of work there. And the the goal, the second to last bullet item, you know, the production feeds, uh, the, the goal was to have them within 30 seconds of live action. Okay, uh, uh, I'm not. You, you all know, you know, kind of the the. The benefits of uh, you know edit at home workflows. Um, so I'm not going to talk you know a, a lot a lot about this, but uh, you know we we actually were were very successful. I think it, you know, this is a, a very um, uh, you know kind of unique uh, use case. Uh, 
especially with uh, you know the the high bit rates that we were pushing back as, as well. And um, like I said, the goal was within 30 seconds of live. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll steal the thunder from a previous from a, a slide that's, that's coming up. We were we were actually we actually ended up um, less than sub 10 seconds uh, at editing that 220 megabit stream. Actually, in Adobe Premiere, it was the editor that most people were using uh, back in LA. So sub 10 seconds, most of the time around seven seconds. Uh, at, we staged things in Charlotte. So uh, and, and then what what happened in Charlotte? This is. Uh, Again, credit to the Fox Sports team for thinking ahead, ahead of, on a lot of this stuff um, to simulate be, uh, Russia to, to LA. Um, we actually, from Charlotte, we actually routed through Frankfurt and then back to LA. So you had, you know, a, approximate distance. And, uh, you know, there was, a, there, there was a lot we learned there. Of course, you know, the things got staged, then they got put on a in a container and put on a ship, and you just hope the ship makes it to Moscow, and uh, and and fortunately everything did, and, and came up uh, pre pretty pretty nicely. Um, summary of uh, of components. Um, as I said, again, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, speak too much about you know us as vendors here, but of course you know we were you know uh, I, IBM Aspera, uh, fast stream technology was used both. Uh, 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 our SDKs as well as some standalone stuff and you know the inter our enterprise server you know embedded SDK was used Telestream likes for live capture advantage Telestream cloud again I can't stress enough how important it was to have that that very tight integration between Lightspeed Live and our, the uh, the Aspera fast stream technology the the and you can you can imagine why that's important one of the reasons it's important is because you have that feedback loop, right? So you, if you have something with like a watch folder, you'll, uh, one of these slides I had on there says no watch folders required. I, I'm not a, a huge fan of watch folders, although sometimes necessary if, for some bespoke environments. But if you don't have that tight integration, you don't have that feedback loop all the way back to the encoder. You don't know that you know when air, when problems occur, you don't you can't adjust and those kind of things. So so again, it was very tight, you know, API level integration. Um, and we've had an integration for some time, but we really tightened it up for this for this event. Um, Levels Beyond is the CMS uh, storage, harmonic media grid, and then Amazon uh, was used pretty heavily, and uh, con a lot of content pushed uh, back to S3. Like I said, we had the one gig connection uh, for that those edit home workflows. We had uh, also a 10 gig connection to uh, to actually uh, uh, S3. Uh, bucket in U.S. West two, so that was it's Oregon, so it was going from Moscow to Oregon and Moscow to L.A. for the for the other uh, edited home feed. So you know, the, quite a distance. Um, you know, the, I've talked about several of these items here. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure we had a fast, you know, efficient, you know, pipeline over un and managed IP networks. Uh, that in application feedback I mentioned, you know, auto recovery in case of a network interruption. Again, that's why we use with FastStream, we have the capability to do file to stream, stream to file, or stream to stream. In this case, uh, for the most part, it, it was uh, stream to file, so we were taking a stream of data in and writing out to a file on the remote side. And by the way, it was, uh, you know, uh, ABC Intro 1080p50 was the source. Um, and uh, also, just that just brought something else to mind, and that is that that uh, uh, you know, in Charlotte, there, the it was quite a quite a setup there that where the the power was conditioned because you, you know uh, you have power at 50 hertz in in, uh, in in Moscow, so so that was uh, the the pictures are pretty pretty interesting to look at. Um, so you know, then we wanted we had this other workflow which which was to be able to transport. Yeah, HLS streams directly into object storage. This is directly into S S3. Now we've done this for a long time with with, with files, but th this in this case what we did is we uh, again embedded directly within the Lightspeed Live encoder. Uh, we actually we, we actually were writing out these segments in real time, and so uh, you know uh, so what that allowed. Now these were these were um, you know only you know there were five megabit uh, HLS. Uh, uh, HLS feeds, but what that allowed allowed to happen was it allowed the uh, you know other editors wherever they may be to actually within the Reach Engine player they could actually um, watch the, the this uh, the live event and, and set in and out points set in and out points for clips that they might want to create and then based on their their action to to actually execute that uh, it would send through again through API it would send requests back. Uh, to uh, to Moscow in, in in most cases that which would then cut 
cut the clip out of the conform was done uh, you know, out of the high-res clip. So th that was actually located on, on storage either in Moscow or LA. Um, <coughs> so let's look at the, some of the results here. Uh, you know, and, and again, some of these numbers, these are conservative numbers. Uh, there are people even from, I was on a call yesterday afternoon from talking about uh, uh, a, a, a talk that's going to be, that if any of you are interested, that we're going to be doing at Amazon reInvent. Very, uh, uh, it'll be a very, very technical discussion. But what, what was, what was uh, mentioned was that, that uh, these numbers, you know, might be low. So they might be, so again, we went with the conservative numbers. Um, so I, when we started, is that telling me to finish? <laughs> I will finish really quickly. Uh, um, <laughs> at, at any rate, uh, when we started, we, we, we thought that so the media grid storage was one petabyte of storage in, uh, on site in Moscow. We thought that we, our calculations were about, you know, we thought, well, we'll probably do about, you know, fill up about 750 terabytes of that, you know, so, so we're, we're, we're good there. Well, when all was said and done, not including test data, we ended up pushing over the course of the event uh, well over uh, 1.9 petabytes of content. It's an insane amount of content to, put, to push over over that period of time. And if you include test content, it's well over two petabytes. Um, so, you know, again, one, and then one other quick anecdote here. When the, when the event finished, there was only the, 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 the final match was, um, you know, one evening and then in, ended. And then there, the, the facility was being torn down in, in, at the IBC in Moscow. Uh, the next morning at like 7 a.m. or something like that. So initially there was, we were, everybody's thinking, okay, we got to make sure we get all this content, <clears throat> you know, off-site here uh, before that before that happens. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that um, th that was done very easily with, with time to spare. And, and every, every, every evening um, <clears throat> we never had to go into the, the, the extra time that we had allocated to actually get content transferred. We never fell behind. It's kept up the whole, through the whole course of the event. So it was very successful in that regard. Uh, 1,300 show elements delivered from Los Angeles. <clears throat> you know, again, many of those uh, you, you know, cut from the live, uh, you know, from, from that edit at home you know, workflow. Uh, 2,700 uh, live feed recorded via Telestream. Again, a conservative number there. Uh, you know, I meant, already mentioned, you know, feeds edible within, in LA within 10 seconds of live action. Uh, and then there were unique challenges. I don't have time to go into a lot of the challenges, but, you know, you never know what you're going to get once you get to, to certain places. There's a whole other workflow that I, I, I don't have time to talk about that, again, the Fox uh, Sports, you know, BDN team was uh, involved in it that was uh, included, you know, virus scanning workflow and all kinds of uh, things that were pretty cool, leveraging some, some uh, pretty impressive technologies. Um, so with that, I'm not, again, I'm not, I think I've, I've spoken uh, about most of this, but I just, I do have a couple of, of quick slides here. And I think I need to, need to wrap up, but this, this is kind of that, that live, you know, edit workflow, and I believe these slides will be posted for people to take a look at, and then these kind of slides kind of build up upon each other, then we have uh, the live, you know, sub-clipping workflow that I mentioned, then there is a, you know, uh, 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 there are both live, live and then post uh, event, and then this is the full operational diagram uh, of all the pieces that we use, so with that, I am going to uh, wrap it up here, and 